Hey there everybody, this is Mr. P. Welcome to another episode of Mr. P Explores. Today we are venturing out to Bellevue, Ohio to take a look at the Mad River and Nickel Plate Railroad Museum, which has a lot of awesome, awesome things to check out. Train related. I am a huge train fan, so this is like a mecca for me. But there's all kinds of neat stuff we're going to take a look at here. Huge pieces of history you can actually climb through, look through, take a look at. So we're going to spend some time here checking out the old trains. So come along with me and let's see what we can find. This is probably one of the coolest places I've ever been. It looks like we have most of the place to ourselves today. So check out some of these old trains. Totally history around here. Trains are a big deal in Cleveland and Northeast Ohio in general. So. This place has the second biggest train yard in the United States. Lots of cool stuff to see here. If you're ever out Bellevue Way, I highly suggest you check this place out. All kinds of cool stuff from back in the day. Old switching boards. And even the bell for Abraham Lincoln's funeral train. This was actually on his train as he came through heading towards his funeral. So here we have an old caboose. You don't see these very often anymore. Cabooses used to be on the end of trains. It's where the crew used to hang out and uh, travel along with the trains. So we're gonna walk up here and check out what they used to look like inside. Work safely. So this would have been the living quarters of a train engineer and the crew traveling across country in style. Imagine sleeping on that. That'd be your bed with a probably a coal furnace of some kind. Oil lantern. Be an interesting adventure to travel across country in something like this. Here we have another caboose inside. Again, not a whole lot of room for sleeping. This would have been your bunk. Here we've got some old school passenger trains. They call the dome train. Back when you used to cross the country in style, you'd actually travel in this, sleep in this. Must've been quite a different time, the silver dome. And if you look up there, you can see the silver dome. Fortunately, this train is closed for refurbishment, so we can't get inside, but hopefully there'll be some other ones we can take a look inside. This is an old Amtrak. You used to see Amtrak. Not so much anymore. Some people still travel to Amtrak, but it's a dying breed. Used to see these in Cleveland all the time, passing through. But unfortunately, modern times have passed the train by, unfortunately. You've got some old luggage cars from back in the day. Whole different time period here. Old toy caboose. And it looks like we'll be able to get into one of these trains. This looks like the actual kitchen car, perhaps. Old kitchen where they used to prepare food for people. Riding along on the train. Very tight quarters, but this is where they used to make all the food. As you'd ride across the country in luxury and comfort. Behind the scenes, your steak, your hamburger, all that stuff was being made back here. So we 
we may actually get to walk through part of this train here. This is actually the one of the train cars. This is how tight this was. Very tight quarters here as you walk through. Into the dining car. This was an old school dining car where you would eat as you were traveling. You might meet any number of different strangers in here and strike up a conversation with them on your way to wherever you were going. You could meet people from all over the country who were going in different directions, different places. Kind of cool to think that this was kind of the social media of the day. You could meet all kinds of different people from other places right here on one train. And now we're actually going to get a chance to take a look at another passenger car here from what looks like the New York City and St. Louis Railroad. Obviously not a railroad anymore, but we still have their cars to take a look at, so let's check it out. See how they used to travel the country here. This is actually a bathroom. Kind of hard to see, but this is where you would... Make a pit stop if you had to. Okay, luggage racks up here. Look at all that old luggage. Very old school luggage. Nobody uses luggage like that anymore. Even better. Check out this luggage. There's a hat box. A lady's hat box from back in the day. When women used to wear hats everywhere. Big fancy hats. Things have changed. So here is where you would ride. And you never know what you might see as you travel across the country. Through the desert, through the plains, through the mountains, wherever you might be heading, you are sure to see something cool. Imagine crossing the country with everything you need in that luggage right there. Check out this old passenger car here. This is where you'd be sitting. It probably looked a lot better back then. But you and someone you probably didn't know would spend a lot of time together here, watching things go by, maybe talking to each other, maybe sleeping up top in this bunk here, or down on the bottom. Not a lot of room to move here, though. A toaster, you've got a drinking fountain, a sink, a mirror. This is pretty much where you took care of business. be cool to sleep here and watch things go by as you're laying here on your bed at night. It'd be kind of cool to watch lights go by from cities you've never been to, rolling through places like St. Louis and Denver and wherever you might be heading, heading to the west coast. Very different type of life back then. You would not be hopping on an airplane. You would not be getting in your car to drive across the country. You would take the trains. It was the cheapest way to go. The most luxurious way to go. And unfortunately now a thing of the past. But at least we have museums like this that still have trains like this to show off. They're not completely lost. Probably one of the coolest places around. Trains you can actually get up inside of. Which we will, of course. All kinds of memorabilia. Old days going by. up here. The 
wonder what a train looks like inside. Well, there you go. Little watchman shanty. Safety first. You can actually open this old box car. Check out some of the old stuff from the train days. Actual commemorative plates from the trains. Tells you how big of a deal these things really were. And if you're a guy like me who had model trains as a kid, this, of course, is a huge draw for you. Trains were everything as a kid. Everything had to do with trains. Everybody wanted to be an engineer. Especially growing up in Cleveland when trains were still kind of a big thing. Freight trains rolled through our town at least once every five minutes, so you grew up with them. You heard them day and night. And we're going to check out old Bellevue Depot here. all around us are trains, awesome trains to look at. You can see all the old rail still here from back in the day. Arrival and departure board. Kansas. Bellevue, Faustoria, all places you could travel to from here. And of course, this is where you'd wait for the trains on this nice wooden bench. Where you would probably buy your ticket. That guy back there kind of creeped me out for a second. I had no idea that guy was there, so <laughs> I did a little double take, a little jump. You might collect mail here. Mail might be coming or waiting for you here if you have a mail car. And look at this beautiful, amazing mural from back in the day. That's something else to see. Check that out. Maintenance car, construction car. And check this out. Oh, they converted this into a little theater using old seats. Remember, kids, trespassing is dangerous and illegal. Stay off the railroad tracks for your own good. This place is definitely a treasure. Like I said, if you're ever out Bellevue Way, eh, it's a little bit south of Sandusky. Make sure you check this place out. It's pretty cool. Especially if you're a trained dork like I am, of old. Somewhere in my mother's pictures, there's a picture of me with an old engineer's hat on. I'm sure it's pretty entertaining. I need to see if I can dig that out. You guys would get a kick out of it. Cool thing is it even smells like old railroad stuff in here. Just that dusty old coal smell from back in the day. It just smells like it's back in the day. 1920s, 1930s. It has that somehow comforting smell of coal burning. And there's your connecting train tables, train schedules. Detroit, Toledo. And we're actually gonna check out the engine here. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, the last time I was here, you can actually get up in the engine. If so you've ever tried to stand there next to the side of a railroad and honk the horn, try to get them to honk their horn, and wonder what it was like inside? Well, here we go. 
what it looks like inside an actual diesel engine. This is where the magic happens. Speed controls. That seat looks like it's seen many an adventure. Hey, there's your horn right there, your air horns. And this is your perspective. This is how you'd be looking at things as you've been traveling across the country. Windshield wipers, the whole nine yards. This is where you'd spend all your time driving the train to wherever they needed you to go. I'm assuming these were for your co-pilots so they could spot you when you were tired. As an added bonus, right across the street from the museum is this beautiful old church. Not sure what church it is, I don't see a sign out here, but they don't build churches like this anymore. Check out that stained glass. Pretty amazing place. Right here next to the museum. There's a train right next to it. Beautiful old church here in Bellevue, Ohio. And this car is kind of special. This is actually an old troop sleeper, which was used during World War II. So if you take a look here, you can see all the bunks where these soldiers would have slept on their way to wherever they were going, probably to head out to, well, to war. <laughs> so they would have slept in these train cars coming from all over the country to the East Coast to be shipped off, or to the West Coast to be shipped off, depending on where they were going. Pacific or Atlantic theaters of the war, but and as you can see here some of the things they brought home That's obviously from Nazi Germany Things they actually brought back on these trains as souvenirs after the war was over And it's a good thing they won, you know, just saying So that's the troop car it Looks like to be a rail yard layout where they'd switch up all the cars got a mail car. So all the different mail from different places would be in these different bags and they would be going to different locations. This was before Amazon and UPS and FedEx. This is how you got your stuff across the country. Probably took a little bit longer I'm guessing but back then it was the best you could do. All these slots were for people's mail. All this memorabilia in here. Plates that were used. Signs that were used. All kinds of great pictures, paintings. And of course a mysterious message that asks you, do not hump. I'm not sure what that means, but in modern terms it probably means something much different than it did back then. Nonetheless, So we're going to walk down along here and check out some of the cool stuff there is. We actually have a, a crane car here that was probably used to lay down tracks or repair tracks. So this thing would go out and fix tracks. It would do heavy lifting. That's the thing folks, nobody ever really thinks about trains anymore because they're just, they're kind of just there. Back in the day, they were done with style. These days, it's just boxcars, semis, trains. That's it. But back in the day, these things were everything. They carried everything and everyone everywhere. We don't think about them these days too much. So that's why I'm out here kind of documenting this so that all you guys can see just what things were like back in the day. You guys know me by now. That's my thing. Bringing you the past one adventure at a time.
I had to show you guys this thing over here. This is actually a snow plow. It'd send this bad boy out in nasty weather to clear the tracks so the trains can get through. A giant plow on the front. These guys are ready for everything. It's amazing just how much of this has been restored. These guys do an amazing job here, keeping this stuff up to date, keeping it fresh, painting it, repainting it, fixing it up like it was back in the day. Definitely worth the trip out here on a beautiful Sunday like this. Another thing that's really great about this place is they add to it almost every year. They are always working on getting more cars, more trains. In fact, last time I heard they were going to get a locomotive here permanently, an old school steam locomotive. All I can see here right now are old diesel engines, but wouldn't that be cool to have an actual steam engine here full time? Every time I come here, they've added more, they've built on, they've made it even nicer. This place is definitely one of those hidden treasures in Ohio that you never know about until you stumble upon it by accident. And that's just about going to do it here for the Mr. P. Hope you guys enjoyed our little tour of the Mad River Nickel Plate Railroad Museum here in beautiful Bellevue, Ohio. Definitely make a point of coming out here and checking this out. Some great history, some great old train memorabilia if you're into that kind of thing. Or even if you're not, it's definitely worth seeing. So plunk your $10 down and check it out on a beautiful Sunday like this. This is Mr. P, as always asking you to keep on exploring.